Today, we're going to be painting the Stormcast Eternal to a display standard. It will focus on painting brighter colours, layering highlights and a simple dirt effect on the robes. As you can see, she's already been primed with Army Painter Uniform Grey Rattle Can, and as it's a snap fit model, I decided not to glue the shield in place. This will allow me to paint in the more difficult areas, such as here. The gold areas are where the primer didn't hit the model as much, but it's still got a little for the paint to stick to, so I won't be worrying about that. First step is to paint her lower robes. I'm using my own colour scheme, so I've gone for Lothar and Blue by Sistel Paints. This will be two thin layers, so make sure you water it down a little bit first. I find four parts to one water is a good standard. What I'm doing here is brushing the same direction downwards, so that it's an even and smooth coat. Here's the first layer finished, and as you can see, it's thin enough to let the grey primer through in places. This is what you want. A second thin coat will fill this, and two watered down coats together makes a much smoother surface than if you try to blob on paint in one thick coat. I've completed the second thin coat here, which I actually added more water than normal, almost a third of it being water. It'll still cover up the primer, while still being thinner. Remember that when paint dries, the water leaves the model and the pigments stay behind, so adding more water isn't going to ruin a thing if you're in doubt. Next step is to start on the upper robes, which will end up being white. To start this, I'm using Citadel Paints Administratum Grey. It's lighter than the primer, and a first step of many greys to getting to a pure white. After one thin coat, this is the result. As you can see, it's a bit lighter than the base colour, and thinning is absolutely essential here, as you want to keep as much detail as possible. I like to get the base colours out of the way first, so I'm going to be using Game Colour Gunmetal on all the parts I want to be silver armour later on. Here's where I've applied Gunmetal. The weapon, helmet, all the armour, including shoulder pads. Some of these will later be gold, but this makes a solid base that gold sticks to well. I have also done the back of the shield, the top of the front of the shield. If you're keeping the shield separate like me, don't forget to paint her arm too. This is what she's starting to look like all put together. You may notice that I've got some silver on the nice blue robes. Don't worry about mistakes like this. It's very easy to go over with watered down blue without ruining the detail. This next part is optional. I've gone ahead and painted the gold on the shield already. The flat of the shield will eventually be white, so you may want to leave this part to last as getting a smooth white can be very hard to do. Painting over the work you've already done can be a pain. Either way, you can base coat the panel of the shield administratum grey here. And here she is again. I'm going to get some of the detail base colours out of the way now, starting with Citadel's Tuscor fur on the hammer handle. Simple. 
I'm going to need to take her shield back off to paint her gloves. I'm going to be doing them a black. Now for her plume. I want a little more vibrancy in her colour palette. I've gone with a lot of pale colours so far. Her plume will be a corn red to start. It's a darker red, but it will be highlighted later so it will be bright. Now we're going to do some shading on her robes. Using Drakenhof Nightshade for a fine shading in the recesses. This is not a job for a large brush. Use your fine detail brush for this. The trick is to get all the deep crevices and where the blue meets another material like the armour. Here it is. It's only a small amount of shading. You can already tell it makes a huge difference. If you're like me and smudge it everywhere, doesn't want it, you can always go back over in Lothurn Blue. The next shade is Citadel Non Oil. This is my go to for most shades. This is going over everything else. But pay attention, the white robes just need fine shading similar to before. Be very conservative with it. Some fabric folds won't need any at all. As for the rest of it, weapons, arms, legs, helmet, go nuts. I say that, but try to direct the shade into the corners so you don't get patches of shade in open metal areas. Here's what I've done. The non-oil has darkened the metal armour now, and some deeper areas of the robes have their 3D feel already. I'll show you a little trick I use when doing white robes. To get the flatter recesses that don't naturally capture the shade, mix Lamian medium, non oil, and water in a 2 to 1 ratio, respectively. This will give a really thin shade that won't coagulate too dark in the light colours. It's perfect for these robes. We're still using a fine brush for this though. As you can see, I've done a small line that's not as bold as the known oil by itself. This helps blend different shadows together. Here's a look at what this technique can do. It's gone around her necklace and some of the folds on her chest. The long recesses on her lower robe now look more appropriate instead of known oil along the entire thing. Now, I'm going to be doing a series of highlighting. I mix Administratum Grey and Ulthuin Grey together in a 50-50 mix. We're going over the robes completely except for the recesses that you've just shaded. Go carefully, take your time, you'll see where and when to stop your brush. Doing this will get a great effect. On the lower robes, it'll cover a much larger space, but don't do the areas that are in shadow. As you can see, I've left the recesses and gone over the open areas of robes. This is a very broad highlight and another base colour in one. Of course, do the same on the shield. 
Now we'll be doing gradually finer highlights with pure also in grey. Then slowly mixing in white in each additional highlight layer so it gets lighter towards the edges of the robe. I use game colour white as I find it's a little thinner and a little less chalky than Citadel's whites. Remember, watering down your paints is absolutely vital here. White can get thick and chalky in an instant. Water doesn't fix it entirely, but not using water will definitely doom your efforts. One neat trick that I've been trying recently is mixing in a gloss varnish to the white. This seems to make it smoother on the model, but you can test that yourself as I have not done this in this tutorial. It's up to you how many increasingly white layers you put on. More isn't always better, as too much paint can be put on the model which ruins details. The skill is in making the transition seamless and getting a good contrast. Practice makes perfect. Your final layer should be pure white and should be applied to just the tips of the edges. Now we're going to do a similar technique, but with blue on the lower robes. Because blue is a more forgiving pigment than white, and there's a much larger area of gradient, I'll be using a dry brush for this. I mix Lotharn Blue and Blue Horror in increasingly lighter shades, and in increasingly lighter dry brushes with each new shade of blue. I started off with a very heavy dry brush, going against the edges of the robes. The lighter the highlight, the lighter you should be dry brushing. Now it's time to do a little blend of blue horror in areas that have really defined edges, such as his knee here behind the shield. I've done a faint line with a fine brush to show where it is. Then I'll build it up with just blue horror. Now I've done the same highlighting on the rest of his robes. I did faint lines, then stronger lines. You can make a line weaker or stronger by changing the amount of paint on the brush and by how wide and strong your brush strokes are. This is a skill learnt by trial and error. Too little and it will look like a scratch. Too much and it's a blob of paint. In any situation, it must always be a thin layer. I'm going to be doing a white-blue horror mix now on the tips here. This is where the light will catch it most. Then I go to pure white on the very ends of the robes. You may have noticed earlier that I went over this gold on the shield in white. I decided a smoother white with neater brush strokes was better than being careful around the gold. So I've just redone the gold now. This is how she's looking now. Starting to look real sweet. You may notice that the dry brush has left a few marks on the armour. That's why I did that stage first, as next we can cover up that with Retributor armour from Citadel Paints. It's a gold base colour. I've done the shoulder trims, knees, the halo on the helmet, also the top of the shield. Now we'll cover all her gold parts in Agrax Earthshade. This is better for gold than non-oil, as in my opinion, non-oil can leave streaks and make it look dirty, which is not what I'm going for. I'm now going to do a spillage. We've all done it. Wow, 
What I'm really doing is a dirty defect on the bottom of her robes. To do this, just take a little bit of earth shade on your brush and drag it down the bottom of her robes. Make sure you brush the same direction as the robes are going. This needs to be very light, especially on white colours. The dirt effect isn't done yet, but while it's drying, I'm going to go over the gunmetal we did earlier in Citadel's Runefang Steel. This layer paint is awful at going on as a base layer, which is why we put the gunmetal on first. Aim for the exposed areas like her head, knees, shoulder, and any edges of her armour plates like on her feet and hands. Let's take another look at her. She's coming on nicely, but could do with that vibrancy again. I think it's time to highlight her red plume. I'm using Mephiston red, which is a medium red. You could go brighter, perhaps even orange, but for this scheme I worry about it clashing a little too much, so I'm being cautious. While I do a little spin of her for you, I'm just going to say that I won't be covering the base in detail for this model. I'll give a quick technique later, but it's a dead simple one and I think basing is better off covered in its own video. Anyway, we need to get some citadel bleached bone on the parchment on her shield. I also painted her necklace in this colour too. The brown is now dry on the robes, so the next step is super easy. Just take non oil and dab the end of the robe where the earth shade is, but not as high up as the earth shade goes. Just the tips nearest the ground. This gives the dirt a good blend. While we have the non oil out, take her off her base and cover it in non oil. Then, use a dry brush to clean off some of the shade on the flatter areas like this. This will take a while to dry. Now she needs one or two more touches. I use Flayed One Flesh from Citadel to highlight the parchment on the shield. I also mix a tiny bit of white with Runefang Steel. This is for the armour highlights. This only needs a drop of white, literally a 1 in 20 ratio. Too much and it loses the metallic quality of the Runefang steel, but the right amount can brighten it for a really good edge highlight on metal. Then, a little white touch up on the parchment. Here she is! The base was dry brushed administratum grey, then ulther and grey, then white. I did the leaves as single tones of red, yellow and oranges, but they can be totally up to you. She looks ready to kick some ass now, and I'm really pleased with how this came out. I think it could have been better with my whites, I think they could have been thinner, but it's a hard learning curve, and I hope this has helped you on your way. If you like this, I will be gradually doing more and more miniatures, so please drop a like and subscribe for more in the future.